Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of our slow and immersive playthrough of Stellaris, where we'll be playing the Broken Shackles Origin Empire in a Grand Admiral node scaling difficulty galaxy. We will be doing everything we can to survive, guys. This will be brutal. Okay, victory is not guaranteed, but this uh, will make for a very interesting playthrough. You know, every decision will matter, every pop will matter. Um, however, we will not be playing in any kind of preset way. You know, we do not have a strategy or a build in mind. We will simply be role playing our empire, uh, you know, taking the decisions that are coherent with our overall ethos and yeah see how far we get let's go ahead and without further ado jump into it let's go to new game our empire will be called the assembly of umikandra i will go over the empire and when we load into the galaxies but for now let's just go ahead and uh, skip this just play select and just go over the difficulty settings so you know you know what we're getting into i'm gonna be playing a medium-sized galaxy hard spiral i think that kind of is immersive and uh, sort of, uh, for me at least, kind of realistic what galaxies should look like. We'll be playing with habitable worlds at 0 0.5. You know, planets will be rare and it will matter who controls which planet. You know, we'll, you will have wars over a single planet. It matters what biome it is. It matters where it is, if it's a choke uh, kind of point planet. You know, planets will matter a lot. Guaranteed habitable worlds are off. We don't know what we're going to find there. You know, maybe there will be worlds around us. We might get lucky, get... You know, two or three worlds. We might have to play tall with just one planet and habitats. We don't know. Uh, we'll do the best we can with what the game throws at us. And pl placement will be random. Pre-FTL civilizations, hyperlate density, abandoned gateways, wormhole pairs are all set at one. I find them, um, you know, uh, good, good uh, kind of frequency uh, in a typical game of Stellaris. There's a few of them, but not too many. Technology and tradition costs set at one. Logistic growth ceilings, of course, one and a half. Growth required. Uh, scaling is 0 0.5. This is all standard. Caravaneers are off. That's the only thing that I, to be honest, find uh, annoying more than anything else. I don't really see that they bring anything to the game. Uh, everything else is enabled, guys. Every single other DLC and story pack is enabled. We're playing version 3.10, of course. Uh, L gates are on. Xeno compatibility is on. In terms of AI empires, we'll have between 8 to 16 empires randomized. So, like, so we don't know how many empires there will be. In terms of advanced AI starts, there will be at least half of the empires will be advanced, right? And this is to immerse ourselves and simulate a galaxy where, you know, there is already kind of galaxy-wide slave trade, right? And that's our Broken Shackles origin, where a cr crashed slave ship uh, after a mutiny and, and we establish our empire, uh, you know, from the scraps of that slaver ship. Advanced neighbors will be on, so we will, of course, get some of these empires as our neighbors potentially. Fallen Empires are set to uh, 1 to 2. So again, we don't know. There should be at least 1, possibly 2. And it will be interesting to discover the galaxy. Marauder Empires set to 0 to 1. There may be 1, there may not be any. Crisis Strength is set to 2 because I think the AI will be pretty strong and we will hopefully uh, you know, be in a pretty strong position. And we will delay, you'll see in just a little bit, the end game, just a tiny bit. So crisis type will be all. So on all setting, they will uh, the crisis will fire sequentially in random order, with no more than one happening at a given time. So we'll so hopefully be a long game uh, if we get there, uh, and we will defeat all crisis potentially, or perhaps one of them will finally do us in. In terms of difficulty, we're playing of course Grand Admiral, as I already said. Scaling difficulty is off. Difficulty adjusted AI modifiers is off. Uh, AI aggressiveness is high, you know, they will pounce on us and each other the moment they smell blood. So, uh, yeah, it's important to keep up appearances, you know, it's important to always have, you know, your defenses up and your guard up. So mid-game will start a little bit later than usual, 23-25, end-game will start 24-25 again. Um, the reason, the, my main reasons I always kind of play like this, delay the crisis so that there is actually enough time for you know to kind of have the inter empire politics play out uh, and kind of find a balance um, so we have victory here is off and iron man ma mode is on of course so let's go ahead and jump right mm -hmm. into it guys hit that play button load our new galaxy and see what we get 
And here we are, guys. I've set the UI just before we start. Set the UI to scaling to 2.0. Uh, so hopefully you can see the UI quite well. I tested it and it seems like it looks good in the video. Let me know if... I don't think I can really make it any bigger, but perhaps if you find it too big, I can make it a little bit smaller. But here we are. We'll be playing as the Assembly of Umikandra. All right, and let's see. Let's just read the background. Free at last. Some were born, born into bondage. Others, crippled by debt, found themselves sold as indentured labor. But the technology of our former masters was not enough to save them. In secret, we planned our mutiny. During the brief, bloody struggle, our captors were killed and their slave ship critically damaged. An emergency landing left us stranded on the surface of Umikandra. Though we are made up of species from many different worlds, under your leadership we have found common cause. In time, the damaged systems of the slaver vessel will be repaired, and its bounty of secrets, including the location of our former homeworld, will be revealed. Our shackles are broken. Now the work begins. Here we are, and we are playing the Broken Shackles Origin, guys. This is key to understanding our empire. This civilization began as a mutiny aboard a slaver vessel and is made up of a diverse group of pre-FTL species. So the effects are as follows. Effect uh, initial pops, species from pre-FTL civilizations across the galaxy. Starting planet, free at last planetary modifier, we'll have a look what that is. Crash slaver ship planetary feature. Spaceship wreckage. Uh, we have starting system, crash slaver ship archaeology site. One advanced empire and several pre-FTL civilization, regardless of the galaxy settings. Okay, it's fine. One pre-FTL civilization will be this empire's species in the home world. One pre-FTL civilization uplifted with the payback origin will be in the galaxy. So in terms of penalties, we starting starting planet is not this empire's home world. We have the stellar culture shock penalty modifier, ship debris, uh, uh, five you know five side five blockers that creates for us. Starting system is resource uh, resource deposits are unexploited, so we're gonna have to build up even our starting system. We're missing starting technologies of scientific methods, so no no labs for us planetary government uh we're missing so no planetary administration and we're missing corvettes so we can't even start with building a fleet in terms of policies we can never select slavery allowed and we cannot have purging allowed modifiers we do have available envoys plus one we have first contact speed plus 20 percent and infiltration speed plus 20 percent i guess this is mostly to uh, you know take advantage of the fact that we have many species in our land. So we're multicultural and we're able to, I guess, decode other people's languages and cultures quicker and we infiltrate better since we have uh, maybe you know, local agents, uh, so forth. Um, in terms of, you know, the structure of our empire, we are a direct democracy. This government is a materialistic form of democracy where citizens use computer networks to vote directly on most matters regarding the state, right? And, you know, this is again to immerse ourselves where, you know, having been slaves once, now crashing this ship. The only thing that works is, you know, one man, one vote. Everyone matters, right? Every single pop in our empire matters. And in terms of ethics, uh, no, un not surprisingly, we're fanatic egalitarian, which means we must have a democratic government form that allows utopian living standards, right? And this stands for beware always those who would be despot under the false presumption that their desires and agendas are somehow more imperative than those of their fellows. A society that does not see to the needs of and rights of all of its members is not a society. At, it is a crime. Indeed, we couldn't agree more. Right? No more. We'll never be enslaved again. Right? Empire modifies a faction unity gain plus 50% and specialist pop resource output plus 10%. We're also materialist. As we reach for the stars, we must put away childish things, gods, spirits, and other phantasms of the brain. Reality is cruel and unforgiving, yet we must steel ourselves and re secure the survival of our race through the unflinching pursuit of science and technology. And this is again, these are pre-FTL species that maybe we, they were spiritual, uh, you know, perhaps they even worship those who enslaved them at some point, but now they understand the reality is cruel and unforgiving. You know, they've learned the hard way and do not pray to God for your salvation. You know, you roll up your sleeves and you do. You take your freedom by force, right? Through science and technology. And we know we are far behind and we need to catch up to our captors, right? We've worn this a little window 
uh, or kind of breathing room where I guess no one knows where the slaver ship crashed. Uh, so we need to build up our little government, our little assembly of Umikandra, Umikandra being our homeworld, so the, the planet on which we crashed on. And we need to do it fast. Our civics are beacon of liberty. The society is a shining beacon of light in a sea of darkness. Liberty and individual freedoms are held in the highest regard here. Indeed, again, right? Having been slaves, we have now freed ourselves. We are united and every individual matters. Liberty, and we will die for our freedom. Uh, monthly unity plus 15%. Empire size from pops plus 15%. So again, some good unity modifiers for us. Uh, yeah, and less empire size from uh, pops, so less penalty from pops. Kind of encouraging us a little bit to play tall rather than wide. Okay, council position. We have protector of liberty, which gives us egalitarian ethics attraction plus seven and a half percent available for commander. Okay, and our other civic is idealistic foundation. The society was founded on a strong idea, on strong idealistic values. Whether the current government remains true to them or not. The people have not forgotten. And yeah, again, role play wise, you know, our citizens uh, will always remember where they've come from, right? Their parents and grandparents, even 100 or 200 years into the future. Every citizen has a you know, clear idea as to why the society was founded and the principles on which it was founded. So, citizen pop happiness plus 10%. And we have a council position unlocked, Tribune of Rights. Pop amenities units minus 1.5%. So people don't need so much in terms of entertainment. They're prepare, prepared to bear the hardships, uh, you know, of uh, our world with fewer amenities. But they're still happy. Happy because they they know they're free. All right. In terms of our traits, so this is Oklar, is our kind of founding species. Of course, there will be many. But the reason this species managed to organize everyone to a revolt, right, and the reason for that is they're intelligent. This species is highly intelligent and enjoys faster technological progress. And they were smart enough to figure out, you know, that they're slaves, they're who their captors are, how to overpower this ship, uh, right? They're also charismatic. I mean, it is from, so, and this gives us uh, research from jobs plus 10% for this species. We are charismatic. Members of this species have a special charisma and are generally considered pleasant to be around. And that is, again, goes how they managed to organize all of these disparate species on this slave ship to revolt, right? They are the unifying force behind this nation, at least initially, right? And they're the ones who provide amenities and get everyone together on the same page uh, in this direct democracy. And they are also unruly. Unruly species are difficult to manage and organize. They do not like being told what to do and are often quarrelsome or questioning. And questioning they are. The Oklar, again, they're unruly. Again, spurring them to revolt. They were not going to be just sitting there, you know, working in the mines and factories and, uh, you know, space station and asteroid fields of their captors. You know, they're charismatic and intelligent and unruly. You know, perfect ingredient for a leader of a revolution. They have continental preference. Planet class Umikandra is a continental world. Uh, so that's all clear, right, guys? So here we are. Let's go ahead and begin we're paused and uh, let's have a look at what we actually got so let's have a look at our system okay so it's a binary system two stars planet of umikandra here and we have a few other planets we have a five size deposit on moon of bondoga another five mineral deposit on the planet of argonira uh, and then a two size deposit on the moon of varba Okay, two engineering research on Molgarima, five credits on Umikandra Ogat A, three credits on Umikandra Ogat B, another five credits on Umara, and three physics on Mirida. So it's a, a good system, right? Quite a few deposits here, so that's good. Let's go ahead and jump out of our system and see where we've actually spawned in our galaxy. So here it is, here's our galaxy, here's the center. And we are, oof, oof, a little precarious position. We're kind of towards the center of the galaxy. Um, yeah, so we will encounter empires all around us. However, it seems like upon the initial scan, following the crash landing, we can see that we're actually in a dead end here. And there's even a tropical world 
rule three right next to us and remember guys habitable worlds are very rare in this galaxy so overall a pretty good start okay we're gonna need to rush and claim and uh, claim this constellation and the planets here so here we are uh, let's go ahead and perhaps have a look at assembly of umikandra we have chancellor virpim din badir leading us age 34 Egalitarian ethic, no surprise. He's the one leading this uh, rebellion. He is charismatic. This leader is exceptionally charismatic, enforcing their will with ease. Edicts funds plus 15, edicts upkeep minus 7.5% per level, and he's level 1 currently. And he's official class, again, he's a leader, kind of an administrative leader now. And for that, he gets um, the, the, the governing home planet amenities plus 2. Council agenda progress, have an empire effects from skill level, unity from factions plus 2%, edicts funds plus 5. So every, for every uh, one point of his skill. Right? He's not a federation delegate right now, he's not galactic community delegate, he's not a sector or planet governor either, I don't think. Alright, he costs us 2 unity to upkeep. So uh, there we are. That's our government demographics. We have nine pops across one world. I'm sorry, that can't be true. We have 29 pops. Can't be true. That's not nine. That should be 29. I think that's just a little, little error. Uh, advisor, that doesn't really matter, I guess. Let's go ahead and have a look. Society management. No, wait. Government. Leaders. Uh, sorry, hang on a second. Creation log, empire. Hang on, where is our? Yeah, there we go. There's our cov. Sorry, I've missed our government. So we have assembly of Umikandra. This is our council. Again, we have Chancellor Virpim Den H34 as our chancellor, uh, giving us unity from factions plus two percent, which we don't have yet. An edict fund plus five. Virpim Den is an egalitarian official from the continental world. Umikandra, where he previously held the position of government official. Our head of research, Kunrigden Armok, is, uh, what is he? He's age 34, he's materialist ethic. Uh, while on the council, leaders provide a 10% ethic attraction towards their ethic. Okay, materialist. He's scientist level 1, survey speed plus 10%, archaeologist skill plus 1, astral rift skill plus 1. And research speed plus two for every level of skill for him. And we have Minister of Defense, Penderm Den Vagors, 43 years of age, also materialist ethic, Minister of Defense. Ship upkeep minus 2%, army upkeep, starbase upkeep minus 2%. This, the Minister of Defense is in charge of the military administration. We have one council position left to unlock. We do have a Minister of State here as well, uh, Yindan. She's she, I guess. No, she's actually he's actually a he. Gender male. Right now, yeah, actually, Pendrig is male, but uh, Kunrig is actually female. Right, Yindan is Minister of State, also materialist ethic. Uh, but here we are, Minister of State. The Minister of State is in charge of diplomatic affairs. And we have Envoy Improved Relations plus 2%, Envoy Harm Relations plus 2%, First Contact Speed plus 2%, Infiltration Speed plus 2%. So we are, and we are on infinite opportunities agenda, as we always are when we start, 159 months, and we have citizen pop happiness plus 4%, and we'll have citizen pop happiness plus 10% when we activate it. So here we are, not much else to see other than let's have a look at our planet. Size 21, pretty good. 80% uh, habitability, we have Yindan, Minister of State, as our governor, and she has private minds. Planet effects, minerals from minus plus 5%. Home planet Umikandra effects, minor jobs plus 2. And minus from, okay, minus from minerals plus 5%. That's pretty good. Um, we have two modifiers, free at last. Citizen pop happiness plus 20%. Pop housing usage minus 25%. Pop amenities usage minus 50%. Unity from jobs plus 100%. Pop consumer goods upkeep minus 50%. Egalitarian ethics attraction plus 50%. Will expire in 20 years. The former slaves are finally free from their oppressors. And we have the stellar culture shock. This planet may be free, but its populace is still adjusting to the sudden realities of a universe larger than they ever expected. And we have minerals, energy, 
credits from jobs minus 10%, engineering research, engineering physics and all society research from jobs minus 20% will expire in 10 years. Oof, here we are, 10 districts basically, right, all mostly scavenger sites. Let's see what jobs we actually have here. And you can see right, amenities wise, we're fine. We do in fact have one person unemployed. We can just go ahead and employ him here. Uh, we have, and as you will see, we have population. In fact, let's have a look at our buildings. You see we have a command center. The bridge of our former, says, former masters of ship hastily refashioned into a command center which gives us colonists a small amount of food and minerals they produce, and amenities and spawn defense armies. We have makeshift farms, hard scrabble farmsteads, building the soil for meager returns. We have 10 homesteader jobs giving us some food. We have scrap refinery, a small-scale refinery making use of scrap salvage from our former masters' ship. We have administrative hub, the state cabins, and living quarters of our former masters repurposed into offices which gives us administrative jobs and which give us unity. Scrap refinery is the one that turns minerals into consumer goods and alloys. We have a power plant, a jerry-rigged assemblage of solar cells linked to the fusion reactor of our former master's ship, uh, giving us two reactor engineer jobs, giving us some credits. And we have a laboratory complex for what it's worth. Experiment, experiments in multiple disciplines take place in what was once an engineering bay, right? Giving us... Uh, what do they give us? Two scientists, which produce in total just uh, three of each research physics, society, and engineering. So fairly inefficient buildings. We're just leeching off the our master's ship that's crash landed. So there we are. I will go ahead and have a look at our population more detail once we unpause. But for now, let's consider what our options are. I think our first priority is to explore, find the choke point and seal it off right and to that end go ahead to go to our shipyards and let's see we have a hundred alloys and we'll go ahead and build a science ship that will be the first priority uh we do have idle leaders go ahead and look over our research and of course for our physics research let's go ahead with scientific method to unlock research labs and Everything a research seg district research segment and like district zero G uh, research uh, district. I guess that's for uh, habitats and probably for the ring world. I guess, but important for us is building research labs because we desperately need more research and scientific research. So let me just read out the tooltip: testable predictions of observable phenomena. Here we go. Absolutely necessary. We have plus seven percent to research from materialist plus five percent ahead of research plus two percent. Let's go ahead and select society research. And here we do have xeno linguistics. Mm, it's actually quite nice and rare, and that's unlocked for us since we already have. Let's go for planetary government so we can get a planetary administration and set up our uh, nascent government. Once a colony has been firmly established in pioneers turn into citizens the need for a strong local government providing stability trumps the colonial need for flexibility definitely something we need and powered exoskeletons we can do army damage but we're in a galaxy of unknown let's go ahead with get the corvettes the ftl breakthrough allowed early attempts to adapt traditional surface to space shuttle frames to military applications to finally create relatively small fast and maneuverable vessels with limited firepower Let's go ahead and research the Corvettes for sure. And let's go ahead and we can actually unpause now. Oh, we have discovered a new archaeological site. Our scans of the Erasmadon system show that it, its asteroid belt is of an unusual variety. Instead of the standard mix of rocks, ice and space rubble that usually make up such formations, it seems to be the remains of a number of large artificial habitats. These must have been destroyed with incredible violence sometime in the last few millennia. Oh, hang on a second. Uh, untold secrets may be contained within the resulting debris field, but it is so extensive that the charting, the charting it out could take quite some time. Debris belt. Okay. So we will not be... I'm sorry, guys, for the size of the UI. But here we are. We actually have an incoming transmission straight away. 
Cornistian Forerunners, Stagnant Ascendancy, a stagnant form of government based on ancient traditions and long forgotten principles. Okay, and they are fanatic xenophile. If there ever was such a thing as an absolute moral imperative, it would be to explore the cosmos and embrace all within it. We were never meant to journey alone. Indeed. Oh, Clary, how delightful. We hadn't expected to encounter you for a few centuries yet. Personally, I thought you would wipe yourselves out a long, a long before leaving your gravity well, but I'm glad to be proven wrong. Oh, and it's good to find a... Effectively, a fallen empire, stagnant ascendancy, who are enigmatic observers. This fallen empire dedicates, it, dedicates itself to the study of the younger races. They may offer tasks or demand tribute from lesser empires to achieve this end. And they're friendly, and I think they will understand our plight. And therefore, we greet you as equals and friends, star travelers, right? There we are. Go ahead and unpause, keep the time ticking. We actually found another archaeological site, which is the crashed slaver ship. Repairing the computer core of the crashed slaver ship should reveal the location of our former homeworlds, as well as Minamar specialized industries. Okay, go ahead and unpause. So we have two archaeological sites, one in Arismadon and one in Umikandra on our home planets. Our leaders are idle, but that's Fine. We don't have a fleet for our Minister of Defense to control, and our head of research, who is actually an archaeologist, this leader excels at the study of alien artifacts and structural remnants in the field. Uh, so oh, we actually have a science ship unlocked already while I'm talking. Let's go ahead and survey uh, rule to see, find the choke point. It might actually be in rule and get the tropical world surveyed. Actually, that's how we've built our ship a while ago. I didn't know. Oh, we actually just made our first mistake already. It only takes... Hang on, let's pause again. The game actually runs pretty quickly, even on just... Uh, sim uh, even just on speed of one. But I feel what we need... Yeah, we're going to need another science ship straight away. That took 60 days. Oh, guys. We, yeah, we just wasted like three months uh, while I was talking. Oh. You cannot make these mistakes on broken shackles with Grand Admiral and no scaling. <laughs> but I have made it. But let's go ahead and have a look for a leader. What do we have available? We need another scientist for our science ship. What do we have? Leader trait. Uh, logistics understanding we have. Oh god, we have homesteader. We have energy mogul. <coughs> hmm. None are a particularly great choice. We have an archaeologist already. Army... Uh, we don't have any ships, farms... Uh, yeah, I mean, if they were a governor, it would matter. But technician jobs, farmer jobs... Oh, pretty terrible scientists. Yeah, unlucky. Unlucky we don't have anything better. But let's go get an Zetios, at least. Let's get... Um, Technician jobs, I think, is the best of the bad options. But here we are. AISS Pacharion is ready to explore with Zetios. So I would suggest we actually go ahead and explore the system together. So we do it as quickly as we possibly can. And then we can jump out and explore these and go left and right. So hopefully two science ships should be enough. I would hope. I would like to explore a little bit with our archaeologist. Get uh, get him a, a little bit more experienced. And then he can come back and actually do the archaeology site on our homeworld. And disassemble the starship. Ooh, here we go. Unshackled politics. To unite against our former masters was easy. With a common enemy, we struggled and fought as one. But with freedom, cracks have started to appear. We are people of many worlds, and our politics are no less diverse. New factions are being founded. More will surely follow. As a people, how well we navigate these differences will determine our fate. Understood. Assembly of Mikandra, new factions will be formed. Unshackled politics modifier added for 10 years. Which gives us faction unity gain plus 50%. Understood. Hey, let's see. 
What are our other options, guys? Let's go ahead and on the conjure decisions. There's not much to take. We do have pops growing. We do have some jobs for them. That's good. Hopefully we gain. Hmm. I would actually suggest we. Oh, hang on. Sorry. We actually reduce number of homesteaders to minimum. Fill all the other jobs. We don't need that much food. Let's go ahead and pause. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we're hovering on. Okay, food. So we have jobs for our new hops. Um. Let's keep that on there. Let's go ahead. Both of these will actually just tell them to survey the next system once they're done. We could also, now that we have a hundred alloys, go to our shipyard and let's go ahead and construct, uh, build a construction ship so we can start uh, actually claiming systems and utilizing the resources at our disposal. But another interesting thing to look at is let's have a look at species. Let's have a look what we have in our empire by count. Uh, sorry, why don't we? This doesn't seem to be able to sort it with the UI overhaul mod, but that's a Okay, did that just happen or not? Okay, it just takes time. So we have nine species, nine uh, pops of Oklar, which we've gone over. We have six pops of Bzadi, who are lithoids. Okay. Uh, and they have crystallization trait. With crystalline growths, this species is capable of generating self-replicating lattices of themselves, in addition to the more usual reproductive methods. Okay, and they have a savanna preference. Climate preference, yeah, okay. And then they're natural physicists. Remember, members of this species have a natural inclination towards theoretical physics and astral phenomena. And they are resilient. Defense army damage plus 50%. Members of the species are physiologically resilient and will fight like enraged broodmothers to defend their worlds. They're also unruly. Okay, let's go ahead and unpause just to keep the clock ticking. We can actually reduce the speed to slow, perhaps, while we're reading. We have three... Uh, species three pops of humanoids with arid preference who are natural engineers members of the species have a natural inclination towards engineering and material sciences they're also strong members of the species possess great physical strength making them formidable fighters on the ground uh, so let's go ahead and pause we do have our construction ship ready and I suggest we get the minerals up and running we will need a lot of minerals to build up our planet so that will be first our first uh, move. Let's go ahead and come back to the species. Sildor. Strong and they're communal. Members of the species are highly communal and quite used to living in close proximity to others. They're also resilient and unruly. They will fight like enraged broodmothers to defend their world. Good stuff, guys. We are ready. Right, we're ready to defend our freedom. We have three pops also of Mesh Ben. Fungoid. And they are Phototrophic replaces 50% of base food upkeep with energy upkeep. Log updated. Hang on. Okay. Let's have a look. The Erasian Concordat. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on A1XR1. From what we have translated so far of their language, we have learned that these aliens call themselves the Erasian Concordat. They were an interstellar power that held sway over this region of the galaxy a little over a million years ago. They appear to have been six-limbed mammalians and there are several references to some sort of plague called the Jovian Pox, Javorian Pox, which swept across the, their empire with devastating results, possibly leading to their extinction. Interesting. Begins the precursors, the Erasians event chain, and we gain 30 minor artifacts. Okay. Keep searching, guys. Let's go back to overlooking our uh, species. And they have alpine preference, the mesh bends. They are photo phototrophic. The species is sustained by a combination of both food and sunlight. Nice. They're forcefully devolved. This the brutal devolution process endured by the species had a strong negative impact upon their abilities. Ouch. Army damage, resources, pop growth, leader experience gain. Okay, let's pause. I think that's our first unity. They're natural engineers. Members of the species have a natural inclination towards engineering and material sciences, however. And they're nomadic. The species has a nomadic past and its members often think nothing of relegating to another world. And they are decadent. The species believes that whatever there is, whenever there is hard work that needs doing, that work is always best done by somebody else. Oh, somewhat what? Lazy 
tinkering, nomadic, but also phototrophic fung mushrooms growing in alpine regions. So kind of like a little moss. Uh, okay, the traditions are available. So our first unity traditions, as just we go with discovery, right? Our curiosity about the universe is what got us this far. And there is still so much left to discover. And adoption effects will get chart the unknown agenda. We will unlock an edict, map the stars. And we'll have anomaly research speed increased by 20%. And then hopefully we can get to boldly go. A new age of exploration is upon us. As we once mapped the surface of our homeworld, we must now brave new terrain, space. There's a galaxy full of wonder waiting to be discovered. And that will give us survey speed plus 20, 35%. And science ship disengagement chance plus 50%. So let's go ahead and adopt Discovery. Council agenda available. Our curiosity about the universe is what got us this far. And there is little, still so much left to discover. Sure, the agenda chart that I know has been unlocked. But we have our other agenda running at the moment. Which is infinite opportunities. Let's go ahead and unpause. Keep the game rolling. We are constructing our... Uh, mining stations. Go ahead and queue this up so that our ships you know, continue to do their job. Let's go ahead and look at our factions quickly. So we have Citizens for Freedom Party. Egalitarian Ethos. Okay. Nine pops supporting this faction. 64. Let's go ahead and manage faction and promote it so that we have more pops all embracing uh, or migrating to the Citizens for Freedom Party. All right, we are egalitarian. This is our main action what do they do not like so let's go ahead and just benevolent subjugation policy our subjects look to us for guidance and protection and we should strive to repay their trust by respecting their liberties adopting a benevolent approach to subjugation will please the citizens for freedom party okay we can do that for our policies uh governments or policies and edicts let's go ahead and say subjugation war terms Benevolent Vassalage. Go ahead and change that. Uh, yep, so hopefully we get more support, more unity, and we'll have more pops migrating to this faction. Let's go also and have a look at our edicts now. So we have access to map the stars. Let's just get a little bit more unity. Survey complete. Oh, the rule system has been fully surveyed. Okay. Unusual energy readings in rule. Routine, but 150 days. We briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this planet. It might have been a glitch in our systems, or it could be a sign of something more. Let's leave it be for now. It's more important to explore and find, understand where we've actually landed. Uh, yep, and let's go back to our government and our edicts, and let's go ahead and turn on map the stars. We have 30 edict funds, and this will cost us 15. And 14 to actually activate it. So there we are. And map the stars. This edict pushes for further galactic exploration. To bring light to the darkness. And find what wonders lie beyond. And so service speed is increased by 25%. Anomaly discovery chance is increased by 10%. And ship hyperlane detection range plus 1. Let's go ahead and unlock that. All right. Upkeep 14. Uh, cost. Uh, edict. Dies, but okay, then we get the benefits applied from various various bonuses, and so that translates to 13. Let's go also encourage political thought so that we have ethics shift chance plus 100%. This edict encourages the populace to openly discuss political matters, even if the path taken may lead them astray. But I feel we have a lot of attraction for egalitarianism. Let's get everyone who is, not, agenda ready. Who is not yet on board, uh, let's get them on board with egalitarian ethics. Okay, we can go ahead and launch agenda, increase our happiness and therefore resource output and start preparing the next agenda. And what do we have? Chart the unknown. We must fervently chart all the mysteries of the galaxy. Survey speed initial modifier plus 25%, anomaly discovery chance plus 5%. And when we launch it, it will take 142 months, 10 years to prepare this agenda. I mean, in 10 years, there won't be left much left to explore, frankly, to survey. We're only going to get the initial, really. I sort of feel that's okay. We're going to get... Yeah, we're going to get survey speed from other places. Evolving society. Monthly unity plus 10%. Launch modifier monthly unity plus 40%. 
ideas and theories for new ways to improve ourselves must be discussed and pursued with fervor. Yeah, I feel like we need to evolve our society. Expand the council. No particular benefits, but we'll unlock one council in 10 years. Give and take. Faction approval. Egalitarian ethics. Attraction. Action unity gain. Give and take. This would be good to them for long-term unity gain, but for now, we don't have that many pops, so we're not really generating that much unity from factions. Progressive growth. Mechanical pop assembly speed, materialist ethics attraction, and then we have mechanical pop assembly. We're not assembling anything. Okay, progress to, towards robotic workers, powered exoskeletons plus 25%. The only practical way to satisfy our desire for growth is through manufacturing it. And we have reorganized council, allows reselection of unlocked council positions. Due to change in government focus, we should reorganize the council to focus on other matters. That's just we go with evolving society. We get monthly unity plus 10%, which is important for unlocking those. Uh, traditions uh, and then we get plus 10% for 10 years and then we get plus 40% ideas and theories for new ways to improve ourselves must be discussed and pursued with fervor go ahead and go for that and I think that makes sense for a new nation of disparate ex-slaves you know we need unity we need to understand where we've come from and what's happening ruined Dyson sphere wow we have encountered the remains of an enormous space structure in er Egror encompassing the system's primary star, I guess. Our scientists theorize, theorize that this may have once been a functional Dyson Sphere, a megastructure designed to harness the power of a star. It is obviously no longer operational, with its hull having sustained critical damage from an unknown type of energy weapon. Of note are also the large debris fields surrounding the sphere. Although the megastructure itself is ancient, much of the debris in the system appears to be significantly younger. Most of it seems to originate from two distinct battle fleets that, p that pummeled each other into oblivion, possibly in a war to decide ownership of the Shattered Sphere at some point in more recent galactic history. Fascinating. Okay, we need to go ahead and actually after we build our uh, uh, mining station here, the second one, which hopefully we are... Okay, we just started building it. We need to go ahead and start claiming because this is an incredible system with a habitable world and a Dyson Sphere. Let's go ahead and also click on our scientists and we will keep our archaeologist close. So we will keep our archaeologist and let him explore these maybe two systems just to see if there are any more choke points here. And ISS Pacrion, led by Zetios, uh, will in fact will go shift and go north. And explore this way. Perfect. I mean, this is a very strong start, guys. We're in a perfect defensive position. Uh, we have a habitable planet which can act as a uh, um, a blocker to entry into our constellation. We'll see how how good these systems are. I mean, it could be that could be terrible. And we even have a Dyson Sphere megastructure. This is a, a good start, guys. But, uh, you know, I've played this uh, sort of setup a few times. In fact, I played it many times over the past previous patches. And let me tell you, it can all turn very quickly. We could discover, you know, the Marauders here and it will be all over. We could discover advanced AI right here and they could attack us straight away. Or there could be two advanced AIs and, you know, that's uh, something. So you have to, uh, yeah, I mean, even with a strong start, you have to remain vigilant. Uh, so let's go ahead and pause and you know what we should do actually is okay we have that first pop almost ready we do need one pop on food just to keep our food production up we're actually assembling oh that's from crystalline i guess pops here will take okay a very long time to assemble these guys but fine uh so be it yeah but where were we? What were we doing? We were looking over our species. So we got the mesh ben, fungoid, moss uh, from the alpines. We also have dabax, anthropoid, two, survey two species. Hang on a second. Okay, so we have surveyed Egror. Okay, and we're now off to survey other, other adjacent systems. Let's go ahead. And our leaders. I would love to have a better scientist, to be honest. Quickly check our leaders, scientists. Really, no one better? No, there just isn't. Dismiss leader. 
by a leader. No. Fine. Unlucky with the leaders there. It would be nice to have Spark of Genius. Would of course be a very nice, but it didn't happen. Spaceborne life form encountered. Hang on, encounter in Orville. We have made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Orville system. For now, we have codenamed them Daleth aliens. Until we can find out more about them. Until, until we can find out more about them. If they possess a language, we must decipher it in order to establish communications. Start first contact process with the Daleth aliens. Okay. We have made first contact with an unknown entity. Okay, let's go ahead and pause. First contact with Daleth. Okay, and this is what I was talking about, guys. Let's send Durim, then Telnik, an envoy, to make first contact. We should have an advantage, as we have plus 20% from Broken Shackles. Uh, okay, we've discovered another archaeological site. Oh, first contact, system surveyed. Okay, we need to claim Egror e as fast as possible. Oh, oh okay. I well, have a look. Wait. Okay, these are, should shouldn't be. Oof, another habitable planet, continental world. Wow. Okay, we need to get over here ASAP. ASAP. Hopefully, these are not hostile. This is not a hostile uh, empire. But Miri the T Yankee. Where was the Oh, the Fallen Empire made contact with us all the way from here. Interesting. Okay. Idle leaders. Um uh, okay again, just the Minister of Defense. But we don't have a fleet. We can't even build a fleet, in fact. Let's go back to looking over our species quickly. So anthropoid, desert preference, docile, members of the species are easy to manage and organize. They tend to be cooperative and amicable. They are strong, members of the species possess great physical strength, making them formidable fighters on the ground. Okay, enduring, lifespans in, in the species are unusually long. And they are slow learners though, members of the species are slow to learn from their experiences. And they are deviants. These people are rebellious in nature and constantly try to challenge the status quo. I'm not sure how that goes with docile. Here we are. Leader level up. Head of research Kunrig then Armok leveled up. Let's go ahead and take archaeologist level two since we do have a fair number of archaeology sites. Uh, especially on our homeworld, most importantly. Let's go ahead and go species again. Yeah, so there we are. Dabax, the anthropoids. We have more lithoids. Tavorite to Two pops from with Arctic preference. They're lithoid. The species has a silicon-based biology and consumes minerals rather than food. Complete. ISS for Brinthian to complete the construction of a starbase in orbit of rule. Okay. Okay. First steps to the stars. After the mutiny, there were some among us who said we should go our separate ways. They argued that Omicandra was not our home, and that we were nothing but a motley band of indentured assets that the challenges before us were too great to overcome. But with the building of our first outpost, we've shown exactly what a free people can accomplish. The only limit is our own imagination. Onward to the stars. Unity gain 244. Perfect. Let's go ahead and claim the next system, Egror. And we have our second uh, tradition unlocked. And we are locked up to boldly go to increase our survey speed. We need to find out where we are and which way to is best to expand. Mm -hmm. So we have another eight months for the next tradition. Uh, but there we are. Let's finally go back to our species and finish looking over that. Yeah, so Tavorite, also lithoids, right? So the species has a silicon-based biology and consumes minerals rather than food. They are tougher than traditional organics and have slower metabolisms, making them long-lived but slow to reproduce. They're intelligent. The species is highly intelligent and enjoys faster technological progress. Nomadic, the species has a nomadic past and its members often think nothing of relocating to another world. They're resilient also. Okay, so they will... That's defense army damage plus 50%. They're slow learners, however. Members of the species are slow to learn from their experiences. And pop housing usage, they're solitary. Members of the species tend to be solitary and territorial, often becoming agitated in crowded conditions. And last we have Bibaki. Two pops of humanoids. I think this is our Minister of State, Yindan. That's, uh, she's Yabaki. With arid preference, they are conformists. These people always see consensus and are more likely to conform to the governing ethics. They are traditional. Certain aspects of the species' cognition make it... Anomaly detected. Redispose the okay, let's have a look. Energy emissions. 
Karasta system here. Strong energy emissions of an unknown origin make this asteroid stand out from the rest of its peers in this crowded asteroid. Let's leave it for now. It's routine, but we need to understand whether we have any neighbors and what their intentions are. That's our priority. Okay, and we're going to grab Egror, and then we're going to need to move to Orval and grab that. Wow, we have two habitable worlds. Very lucky indeed. Let's finish our species overview. Traditional, the Bibaki. Certain aspects of the species' cognition make it predisposed to especially value historical precedence and group unity. And, we, and they're conservationists. Members of the species believe that resources must be conserved and recycled. They are weak, however. Anomaly detected. The signs of precursor activity in Orval system. The signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this inhospitable rock. Leave it be for now, for sure. The Baki is weak. Members of the species are physically weaker than average, making them poor Anomaly fighters on detected. the ground. Okay, a distress signal. In Karasta system, our initial scans have caught an irregular signal reminiscent of our own distress patterns. <sighs> Interesting, but let's leave it be still. We need to press on and discover what is around us. And so Bibaki finally are solitary also, right? So members of the species tend to be solitary and territorial, often becoming agitated in crowded conditions. So there we are. So effectively we have... Construction complete. Hang on. We finished the construction here. Wait, hang on. How long will it be to surveying? Okay, still 50% towards completing the survey. Can we... Let's go ahead and build a mining station at Agro 1 for six minerals. Let's go ahead and put that beautiful ruined Dyson Sphere. Like 7,500 unity, 20,000 alloys to uh, repair it. Survey complete. Wow. Here it is. Uh, hang on, survey complete. Where is that? It's Orville. Uh, okay. Oh wait, sir, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go ahead. Ah, oh, we already started building. I thought we were at 53%. Fine, okay, we started building the mining station. And, ah, oh, we lack one influence. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, we'll build the mining station here for six minerals and then we'll uh, claim Orval. Oh, hang on. Okay, leader level up. Minister of State Yindan of the Bibaki species. She's He's male. This is male. Uh, hmm. What does she have already? She's got private mines. So we can level up that to level two. Minerals from miners plus 10%. Hmm. It's a trader. She's an official class trader. Planet effects trade value plus 15%. And she is uh, a governor. She's the governor of Umi Umikandra, right? Yes, she is. Or she could be a unifier, unity for. We have more than enough unity now. I think it's extra 5% is good, but not necessarily essential. This leader excels at intergovernment diplomacy and consensus building. Although she is the minister of state, so perhaps unifier would fit her. But a trader, trade value plus 15%. This leader has a keen understanding of bargaining techniques, which allows for the acquisition of profitable contracts. How much trade value do we have on Omikandra? Uh, where is... Wait, where is... I forgot where... Uh, where trade value is shown on this uh, kind of revised... Overlay. Oh, there it is. Eight. Yeah, okay, that's not much. So, planet effects per skill level. Okay, how much unity are we producing? 26, actually? Yeah, we're producing a lot of units. Let's get the unified trait. Get the unified trait. Uh, or do we need jobs? More minerals would not hurt. In fact, hmm, private mines. But we'll always be able to upgrade this later. So, Go ahead and get the unifier for our Minister of State. And here we have enough food now. Uh, because we need alloys. We're going to have enough minerals, I think. Let's go ahead and build a industrial district, I think. Make use of you know some of our minerals. Uh, start accumulating more alloys and more consumer goods. Let's go ahead and build that. It's 400 days. How close are we on our research? Research. 20 months. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and build an industrial district. Get some uh, alloys and consumer goods. We are going to be building this mining station here for another six uh, minerals. 
Um, yeah, so we'll have enough minerals. I mean, plus 30, I find, is about the level. That's a good level to have at the start of the game. Okay, we have another unity. I would suggest we actually perhaps unlock... And let's see what our options are first. Data, ban data bank uplinks. Unlocks edict research subsidies. Speed up our research. Uh, research station output, 20%. Uh, research from Starbase Constructions by 20%. Or well, Science Division, Research Alternatives, Scientist Capacity, Scientist Starting Skill Level. Not necess really necessary. I would go with Expansion. We must expand our civilization to new systems and planets or risk eventual extinction. Because this will give us uh, new colonies, start with one additional pop, and we will be establishing colonies soon. So let's go ahead and go ahead with expansion. We must expand our civilization to new systems and planets or risk eventual extinction. Colony development speed plus 25%. So no real benefit straight Council away. Agenda available. But we will also can get reach to the stars. The frontiers of our star nation are being pushed ever forward. Soon nothing in this galaxy will lie beyond our grasp. Starbase influence cost minus 10%. So that would be nice to save a bit of influence on claiming systems. Uh... Okay, so that's sorted. Council agenda, superior colonies. We'll have a look at that when the time comes. Leader level up. Chancellor Virpim then, uh, Virpim then Bardir is leveled up. We can get champion of the people. Happiness plus 3%. Pop growth speed plus 3%. Fertility preacher or charismatic. Edicts upkeep minus 10%. Edicts fund plus 35. Mm. We... We're doing fine with edicts. We're doing fine with edicts. I'd say we'd get fertility preacher. Food from jobs plus 10% and pop growth speed. We need pop growth and we need to keep as few of our pops in food jobs so that we make them available for other jobs, I guess. Uh, champion of the people. Yeah, we have enough happiness. Let's do fertility preacher. Go ahead and unpause. Let's keep going. And let's see, natural wormhole. We have detected what appears to be a naturally occurring subspace phenomenon on the edge of the Theris system. A rift in the very fabric of space-time has formed here, creating a wormhole that our scientists speculate may provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. Depending on where the second wormhole is located, this could potentially allow ships to travel from one end of the galaxy to the other in a matter of days. Unfortunately, this wormhole, like the vast majority of its kind, is inherently unstable. Any vessels foolish enough to pass through it would be ripped apart in seconds. If it could somehow be stabilized, however... Wow, okay, very nice. We might have to claim all the way here, but I'm very curious as to what lies this way. And I feel like we could actually benefit from a third science ship to just see what's out here as well. Let's go ahead and go shipyards, build another science ship. Have a look at our leaders. Did we actually get any better scientists by any chance? Oh, okay, let's wait till the leader pool refreshes in 1.6 1. 1. years left. Kind of need him now, not, not later. Hmm. Should we cancel this and wait for a be better leaders? Uh, can't can't really afford to wait, right? You, I rather explore now. We can explore around our constellation, right? But we do need to find out whether there's anyone here. Anomaly detected. Challenging an ancient orbital, ancient shipyard. Discovered an ancient orbital shipyard drifts in silence above this world. It has suffered significant battle damage and entire sections of the facility are missing. Leave it be for now. Let's go ahead and order our queue up our construction ship to build Starbase in Orville to claim that uh, continental world. Gaming A. Okay. But, uh. Survey complete. Oof. Let's go ahead and pause here, guys, actually. System surveyed. 
Uh, yeah, let's leave this on. We're actually coming up on the hour, so I'll make a cut here. I uh, hope you're enjoying it. We only made it three years, but these first years, of course, you know, it, it takes a long time. Well, it takes not a long time, but it takes some time to just get a good overview of the Empire so we know what we're dealing with. But, uh, you know, I'm really excited, guys. Uh, I love Stellaris. It is by far my favorite game of all Paradox games. And just to give you a comparison for those who maybe are not new to the channel, I've seen playthroughs of other games. I have probably, what, 70 hours in Victoria, maybe like 100, 150 in Crusader Kings 3. Hearts of Iron is probably like 150, but Stellaris, I have 700 hours in. I've played this game since it was initially released on 9th of May 2016. Played version 1, 2. I uh, don't play it that much, I guess, but I do play it once or twice a year. I kind of get into it post a major patch. Uh, but because the game keep, gets updated quite often and overhauled quite often, you know, as soon as they get the new Dev Diaries in and, you know, and tell and say you know, how, how they're going to change the game in sort of three, four, six months. I always find it kind of really encouraging and discouraging because like the game just keeps getting better and better. And I think it is an incredible game with an incredible amount of depth and roleplay and immersion possibility. I think, to be honest, the most of any Paradox game. But I also get discouraged because I think, oh, like how incredible the game will be in six months, uh, you know. And why don't I just wait for that and then, then do a big playthrough. But here we are, version 3.10, Astral Rifts also enabled. I haven't I haven't played at all with Astral Rifts, so hopefully we get to discover that together as well. But I'm really enjoying it, guys. I hope you're enjoying it too, and stick around for the rest, you know, future episodes. Uh, yeah, I mean, given it's the first episode, guys, again, I'm not going to ask this every time, but do give it a like if you like it. Hit that like button, it really helps. Uh, subscribe if you want to, obviously, look at, you know, other playthroughs, and especially this playthrough of Stellaris, but I'm really excited. You know, this is almost one of the key reasons I started this channel is to bring this playthrough in this particular setup of Broken Shackles, uh, Grand Admiral, no scaling. Uh, it will be exciting, guys. It could all turn within, you know, a few years. Like, like I said, we could discover Marauders here next or here. Advanced AI that's aggressive and sort of authoritarian and wants to enslave us. Could discover friendly xenophile races that are also egalitarian, form a federation with them. I mean, it will be exciting. It will be every choice here matters, every system discovered matters, and as years go by, like a lot of things will happen, even in the first 10 or 20 years. Uh, but yeah, guys, I really hope to see you in the next episode. Uh, so yeah, but bye for now, and thanks for watching.